Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to talk about how often I weigh myself. Um, and because people have asked me about like, and pe people have been congratulated me, for example, like when thing like, when I've said things like, you know, I've not weighed myself in a while, um, and they're like, oh yeah, this is amazing, great progress. And I can see why they say that, because a lot of the time, people with eating disorders, like, get so attached to the scale. In fact, I'd say that in most cases, that is a huge problem. They place too much, excuse the pun, but they place too much weight on what the scale says. Now, for me personally, how often do I weigh myself? I don't. I do not weigh myself. I do not own scales. I have not weighed myself in years, actually. Um, and the reason for that, well, let me just say first, I do get weighed. I get weighed by my team or by my doctor. But when I go there, I ask to be blind weighed. In other words, I do not look at the number on the scale and I ask them not to tell me what it is. Um, because to be honest, I do not want to know. Quite often, um, with, well, most of the time with eating disorders, numbers can become quite a fixation and you know even gaining like half a pound or whatever sometimes and seeing that scale number go up can be triggering. Now I'm not saying that it will be triggering for me, I know it has been in the past right like over the years Um, so I have that experience of knowing that you know it'll be like okay well you can get to that weight but if you go over that oh my god, that means you're fat and you need to stay at that weight. And having that kind of, that obsession, that control, that sort of triggering mindset, you know, is really detrimental. And therefore, I've just decided, you know, I don't want to know it. Just in case I am erring on the side of caution, I just feel that, like, why put myself in a situation that could possibly be triggering for me? I don't need to know my weight. I don't need to know it. So. Why would I like risk the relapse or risk the torment that it might cause the eating disorder voice to chatter in my brain? So yeah, like I say, I avoid it. I do not weigh myself um, and I have no inclination or no desire to do so. Now, I would encourage everyone with an eating disor disorder to do this. If you own a scale, go and smash it. Go and chuck it in the bin. Seriously, don't even keep it in your house because sometimes the temptation could be too much. Now, when I go back to my parents' house, my parents own a bathroom scale, but I'm not even tempted to go on it. However, that is like something that I have like conditioned myself over the years. You know, I don't even give a shit. However, I understand that because I remember in the past, right in the early years of my eating disorder, when I was a little kid, right, I was a little kid, I became obsessed with weighing myself. That is one of the uh, the reasons, like, my eating disorder started. That was one of the early behaviours that I had. Every single day, I would weigh myself, um, and I became obsessed with seeing that number go down. I think I was, like, six years old at the time five or six years old and then I remember I'd weigh myself and it was like my little secret thing and then I would push the, sh the scale back to where it was so that my mum and dad would, wouldn't would know that anyone had been on it and then I'd like shuffle back to my room and then I just I remember this one right and I was like rubbing my hands together pretty much and I was like this is so awesome like I've got this little secret going on that no one knows about and I weigh myself like every day and I see that number going down and this is so awesome I'm so amazing like that was I, I remember it I remember that feeling I remember even the words in my head being this is so great this is our little secret and that was the eating disorder voice at five or six years old whispering in my ear you know and so weighing myself was a huge problem for me back in the early days of my eating disorder but like I say now it's not even I don't even do it now I did go to a treatment team last year and I explained that to them and I was like well I explained I was like I want blind weight I don't want to know my weight and then they were like eh, Lauren well this is something that you're going to have to get over you know, you will have to work on this so that you can face the scale. 
And then I was like, obviously this team I did not like really connect with very well as you can imagine but um I was like but then when I went away I started thinking about it and I was like why should I come to terms with it why is this something that I should work on why should I learn to face the scale I don't need to know my weight no one needs to know their weight the only time when you really need to know your weight for example is like for health reasons, like say someone is, well, severely underweight as in anorexic or for example, really overweight and their weight is causing them, you know, health issues, then they obviously need to go to the doctor and be weighed to try and bring that weight down. Similarly with someone who is underweight, they need to be weighed to bring that weight back up. But preferably that will be done with a hel- the help of a health professional. Even if you don't have a team, you have the right to go to your doctor for them to monitor that and for you to ask look, and say, look, I don't want to know the numbers, but I just want you to monitor it, you know. Um, and everyone has that right. You don't need to have a specialist team or anything. Or if you don't even want to do that, you could get someone close to you, like a family member, to you know, you get on the scale, you don't look, but then they take record of it and they tell you if things are going in the right direction or not, right? So I was like, you know, I don't need to ever know my weight. And the more I got thinking about it, the more I realised this. For thousands of years, right, for generations before us, humans have evolved and we have survived without ever knowing our weight you know we have got we have evolved from like like thousands of years and no one even knew what weight was or like you know the weight like our our own weight we scales did not exist humans didn't die out humans thrived and evolved into the species that we are today and we didn't even need to know our weight imagine that but in nowadays, like in society, especially in Western culture, the scales have somehow become this measure of our worth and are like are the measure of our worth as a person, you know, and to strive to get to this perfect number or this perfect BMI, for example, you know, and people like strive to be thinner or you know, and they've kind of like taken control of our life. We've given the scale this weird power that, I mean, it's only a bit of plastic and metal and, you know, a little fucking thing, you know, or digital numbers. And we've given that the power to determine how we feel about ourselves, what we think about ourselves, you know, and to basically determine our self-worth. I don't want anything to do with that. I don't want to empower a scale. Um, And therefore, like I say, I will not engage in it. I will not pander to its use. The only thing that the scale measures is your relation to gravity. That is what weight is, right? It's our relation to gravity on this earth. That is the only thing that it measures. right? That is like one tiny thing of our lives. It doesn't measure how awesome a person that you are. It doesn't measure how kind you are. It doesn't measure how pretty you are, how happy you are, how many wonderful people you have in your life. It doesn't measure all of the, like your intelligence. It doesn't measure all the things that you do to help other people. It doesn't measure anything, anything, other than your relation to gravity and in the grand scheme of things that is pretty insignificant in my opinion unless of course that is detrimental to your health like I've mentioned that w- that should be monitored by if it is a detriment to your health that should be monitored by a medical professional 
Now, as many of you know, I work as a personal trainer. I have worked with hundreds and hundreds of clients over the years, many of them women who, for example, most of them either want to get fitter or to lose weight. And I always tell my clients, right, I do a lot of weight training with them, and I'm like, look, don't weigh yourself because among other things it becomes obsessive but also I'm working with them and I will like I like build help them to build muscle with the weight training and you know their whole body composition will be changing and because they will be building muscle muscle weighs right okay muscle uh, will um, I mean they could be losing fat but gaining muscle and because of that, their weight might not be changing very much, okay? However, their overall body composition will be changing. And I explain all this to them. I explain it, right? You might be getting smaller. You might be getting fitter, right? But the the weight on the scale, the number on the scale might not change. So don't bother weighing yourself, right? Because it's pretty much pointless. However, however, they insist on weighing themselves. They'll come back to me the next week and say, Lauren, I lost this much or Lauren, this. And I'm like, I told you not to weigh yourself. I told you. Um, or like some of them will come back to me and say, look, Lauren, I don't think this is working. I've not lost any weight, blah, blah, blah. Or I'm not, like when I went and I done Weight Watchers, I lost like this much and now I'm not losing any and I'm like yeah but Weight Watchers you put all the weight back on again I was like I explained to you this is completely different yet even though in educating some of these clients they still persist they still are like so attached to the scale and the number on that scale and what it says and it what like that basically determines their happiness for the day if they get on that scale in the morning And I mean, this is people without eating disorders. This is like normal women, like normal women, like women who like do not have eating disorders or any like health issues or anything. They'll get on the scale in the morning and depending on what that scale says, that determines whether they're happy for that day. And what a lot of women especially don't realize is that that scale can alter depend like every day of the month. Because of your monthly cycle, you will hold more water weight on certain days. You will weigh more during your month, like your period, things like this. But people like do not seem to grasp that. Even if you tell it to them and hammer it into their head, they still don't care. They still want to see that number drop. And that's why I think we should just keep scales in our bloody doctor's office for where they are actually really, really needed. But see for general people's health, not even for people with an eating disorder, just for general people. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. I think we should all have a scale smashing party. That would be awesome. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching this video. Let me know in the comments below what you think. And I'll talk to you all in the next one.